Welcome to KJV Kitchard. This is JC Legar, and I'll be teaching tonight on the doctrine of God the Father. But before I do anything, what do I need to do when I'm up here? You in the back. I need to pray. And why do I need to pray? Who can tell me that? Uh, what do I need to pray, young lady? So that the Holy Spirit can use you to teach us. Very good. I need the Holy Spirit to fill me and teach you through me. Because without the Holy Spirit, what can I do, guys? Nothing. Nothing. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, Father, thank you for this time in your word. Lord, the purpose of us learning the word of God is to get to know who you are. We want to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also want to learn, Lord, to love what you love and to hate what you hate. And Lord, what you love is the sinner, but what you hate is the sin. So Lord, help us to know the difference between the two and to focus on winning the lost, Lord, because we don't want to see anybody end up in hell. So bless this time now in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. So uh, real quick, I want to give a special shout out to my beautiful sister in Christ, Kenya. She is right here. She let me doodle her face and I've put her in several of my gospel tracks and my comic books and she was kind enough to allow me to draw her. So love you little sister. God bless you. Big hairy hug. All right. So tonight we're going to look at what God hates, and also what God loves. So in Proverbs 6, 16, it says, These, or these six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Now, one thing that will turn an angel into a devil is pride. <laughs> Who knows that before Lucifer fell, he was an angel in heaven, and he was the most beautiful angel, but then the pride got to him, and God kicked him out. Here in Psalm 101, 5, it says, Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. So again, God is looking at the heart, and if he sees pride in there, he's going to have an issue with you. He says here in Proverbs 16, 5, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Now, this can be a hard topic because I've got several friends who are of a certain orientation where they love the word pride and they have a pride parade. Well, again... Hate speech would be for me as a Christian to keep my mouth shut about what God hates. God hates sin, but he does love the sinner. And if you want to persist in that lifestyle and you choose to reject God's warning and you die in your sin, he will send you to hell. And that breaks my heart. Again, as a Christian, I love you, and I want to warn you, repent. Now, if you're a Christian and you're saying in your heart, Hey, God loves me, I can do anything I want, and Jesus died for me, so it doesn't matter, I'm forgiven, I can do whatever I want and still go to heaven, that is not the heart of a Christian. That is the heart of a false convert. Now, again, I'll use me as an example. In my flesh, I like women. Now, if I had my own free will to do what I want, I would be with as many women as I can. But that is not God's will. 
God's will is for one man and one woman who are married, and after you're married, be faithful. Now, if anybody does anything outside of that, God will judge that. And again, I don't want to see anybody lost. So, you know, you may say, but I have these feelings, I have these urges. Well, guess what? So do I. You know how much it would be easier for me to steal than to work? And let's say if I'm hungry and I see food there, and the person that has the food is a lot weaker than I'm a big guy, it would be so easy for me to say, I'm going to beat this guy up, take his food, and nobody can stop me. But guess what? God has a problem with that. He says, thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not kill. So again, because I love the Lord, I want to obey the Lord. See, it would be so much easier for me if somebody confronts me if I do something wrong. I want to justify my bad behavior, so it would be so much easier for me to tell a lie and say, no, I didn't do that, and I'd be lying. See, my flesh wants to lie, but the Lord says lying lips are an abomination. So just because I feel a certain way, God doesn't say, oh, I care about your feelings. You can do anything you want. Does that make sense to you guys? Have you ever felt like, oh, this is my natural me, it's in my nature to do certain things that are sinful, and I have no control. Think about it, guys. Have you ever wanted to steal a toy? Look at me in my good eye. I'm looking at you. Have you ever wanted to steal something? You Never? I always wanted to steal a Beyblade. No. Oh my gosh, how do you know I look What about you? Have you ever wanted to steal something? Be truthful. Yep. Yeah. What stopped you? Or did anything stop you? Did you steal? I just, I just told myself that, nope, I'm going to be respectful and earn it. Very good. See, God put it in our heart to know right from wrong. Even though I may feel a certain <clears throat> way, God says, don't do that. Now, if I love the Lord, I'm going to say, Lord, I love you enough to obey you. And I'm not going to do this, even if I feel like it. Like I said... My flesh wants to sin all the time. But my spirit says, obey the Lord. And my soul has to choose which one to listen to. <clears throat> so the, the Lord hates pride. Again, Lucifer in the beginning, when he was put here on the world, you know what all angels were meant to do? Angels were meant to be ministering spirits to those who shall be heirs of salvation. So guess what? God wanted all the angels to serve humanity. And Lucifer is looking at these two garden dwellers, Adam and Eve, and he's like, I gotta serve these two? I should be in heaven being worshipped instead of being here on the earth serving, and he said, you know what I will do? I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also in the congregation in the sides of the north. I will be exalted above the heights of the cloud, and I will be like the most high. Guess what? He wanted to be God. But the job's already taken, so sorry, Lucy. Lucy, you're kicked out. So God kicked out Lucifer, and now he's a little upset about him having to burn in hell for all eternity. So you, you know what he wants to do now? He wants to take every single one of you down to hell with him. And he wants to watch you burn. No. Do you have a problem with that? Guess who, guess who else has a problem with that? God. God has a problem with that. So what did he do? He came to the earth as a man, took all your sins upon himself, and he died 
for all humanity. So again, God became a man and died for all humanity. He did not die for the angels. Stop. So guess what that means? Satan hates your guts. Because you can do something that he cannot do. You can repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, again, the devil will want to instill in your heart pride. Because God hates pride. And God will resist the proud, but he will give grace to the humble. Now, that's enough of what God hates. Let's look at what God loves. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance does behold the upright. Psalm 11, 7. And in Psalm 146, 8, it says, The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. Psalm 37, 28 says, For the Lord loveth judgment and forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And in 1 Peter 3, 4, it says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of the Lord of great price. Now, I want to go back to this verse right here, Psalm 37, 28. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever. Now, the judgment that I believe it's speaking about is the judgment of the cross. When God took all your sins and judged him on the cross. See, nobody gets away with sin, guys. Either you will have to pay for them in hell or Jesus will have to pay for them on the cross. Now, Jesus willingly came to the earth because he loves you. But if you choose to harden your heart against the love of God and do things your own way, where you're like, I don't need God, I'll be fine without him, I'm going to live my life my way, and just enjoy my life while I can, and then if there is a God, once I get there then me and him can talk it out. If you die without Jesus, you will spend all eternity screaming in agony in the flames of hell. That is not God's will for you. But he will not force himself on you. Again, God loves you, but love is never forced. They have a word for that, and it's not a nice word. Love is offered, but if you don't want it, then God says, look, if you don't want my love, then you will spend eternity apart from me in a place that is filled with hate, burning in the lake of fire. So again, that's not a cheery thing to think about, but again, it's something that's kind of heavy. You know, who here knows that they're going to heaven? Is there anybody who thinks if they die today, they wouldn't make it to heaven? You, you're not sure? Okay, uh, what I'd like to do is go through the commandments with you guys real quick. The first commandment is... Do not worship anything except the Lord. Yeah, you shall have no other gods before me. So has anybody ever worshipped anything other than God? That would make you an idolater. The second one is do not make unto yourself any graven image. Third one is do not take the Lord's name in vain. Fourth one is remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. Fifth one, honor your father and your mother. Sixth one, you shall not kill. Seventh, do not commit adultery. Eighth, do not steal. Nine, do not bear false witness. And ten, do not covet. Don't be jealous. 
Again, let's raise our hand now. Let's be truthful. Has anybody here ever told a lie? The Bible teaches all liars will have their part in a lake of fire. Think about that. Not some liars. All liars will have their part in a lake of fire. I've lied. I deserve to go to hell. Another one, it says, do not commit adultery. But Jesus said, if I even look upon a woman to lust after her, I've committed adultery with her in my heart. Yes. Yikes, I'm guilty. Another one is, thou shalt not steal. Has anybody here ever stolen anything, regardless of the value? No thief will inherit the kingdom of God. And uh, another one that's really popular with you guys, who's ever talked back to mom and dad? Yeah. And another one, who's ever hated someone? Whosoever hates is a murderer, and you know no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So on Judgment Day, if you stand before God without Christ, God will see you as a lying, thieving, adulterer, blasphemy. I mean, we've broken all ten. If we really want to look deep into our hearts, we have all broken all ten commandments. And on Judgment Day, we are guilty before a holy God. And if God gives us judgment, he will send us to hell. And what can we say? What could we possibly say in our defense? We are guilty, wicked, rotten sinners before a holy God. So what did God do for you so you wouldn't have to endure the flames of hell? He, he sent his precious son to die on the cross. That's right. God became a man, born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life that none of us ever could. And when he was 33 years old, he hung on the cross, bearing our guilt, our shame, our sins, and God punished him in our stead. He died, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. And now Jesus says, whosoever believes in me will not perish, but will have everlasting life. So my question to you is, if you are not saved yet, why not? Young lady in the back, if you are not saved yet, why not? What is holding you back? Think of it this way. If you are thirsty and you have a cup, of cold water, or in this case, coffee, yeah. and I offer it to you, why should you say, no thanks? You should say, thank you. I received this free gift, and I'll drink it. So in the same way, the Bible teaches, as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name. So I don't want to embarrass you, sweetheart, but salvation, when it is offered, you don't want to put it off. Because who knows when they're going to die? We all could die tonight for any reason. It's a scary thing. We want to be right with God. And when God offers us the opportunity to get saved, why in the world would we want to put it off? So let's... Make that decision now. Everybody bow your heads, and I'll say the prayer, and you can pray with me. But again, this is between you and God. But I want to encourage you, make that decision. Don't put it off. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I am a sinner. I am a sinner. And I do deserve to go to hell. And I do deserve to go to hell. But I believe, Lord, but I believe you, that Lord, you died for me. That you died for me. And paid for all my sins. And paid for all my sins. Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent. Forgive me, Lord, for my sin. Forgive me, Lord, for my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And save me. And save me. And make me your child. And make me your child. I give you my life. I give you my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so again, this is between you and God. 
uh, I want you to really go home and look at your heart, make sure you are truly sincere, because eternity is a long time to be wrong. You don't want to get this wrong. You want to get this right. You want to be right with God when you face him. Because he loves you, but he will not allow any sin into heaven. So guys, you've been great. I love you. God bless you all.